Boys and girls, I am so glad to see you all here. I need help with this super duper important mathematical problem. And I heard that all of you are mathematical geniuses. So I've been trying to figure out how much God loves us. I've plotted so many graphs and I've made so many charts trying to figure it out, but I just can't come up with a concrete number. Hmm. I just don't know what it is. You know, my friends actually told me that I can learn more about God's love in this book. Uh, the B by by B I B. Yes, yes, that's the book, the Bible. And luckily, I have a Bible right here. Already. Let's flip to a chapter about love. Love, love. Hmm. Oh, love. Hmm. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. Alright. Say, so, uh, Jeremiah. Oh, yes, okay. Jeremiah. Jeremiah is somewhere. Oh, Jeremiah 31. All the way to verse 3. And it says, The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued to extend faithful love to you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting. Hmm. That means that it lasts forever. So, wait a minute. If God's love lasts forever, that means that it has no end. And if God's love has no end, well, that means that it never runs out. And in order for something to never run out, there has to be a lot of it, like an infinite amount of it. And oh my, boys and girls, that's the answer. God's love never runs out. He loves us so much. It's an infinite amount of love. It cannot be measured. That makes so much sense. Wow, that is amazing. Oh, I have to learn more about God's amazing love for us. And we can at Children's Church today. Oh, I am so excited for Children's Church. And it's almost time to go in. So let's say a word of prayer before we do. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for answering this great problem of ours. Your love never runs out. It is everlasting and it can't be measured. You love us that much and that's awesome. Amazing. Thank you, God, for everything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, boys and girls, it's time to head in and we can learn more about God's infinite love for us. So I'll see you after children's church. Bye. everyone my name is Zach or Zachariah and today we're going to be singing three songs the first one is give 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 to others what you can give 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 whatever's in your hand give 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 to your enemies too and God will give to you give 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 to others what you can give give give
my crumbs. There were one, two, three leopards healed by Christ. There were four, five, six leopards healed by Christ. There were seven and eight and nine healed to ten. In all, all made brand new, but one, just one, only one came to say thank you. There were one, two, three leopards healed by Christ. There were four, five, six leopards healed by Christ. There were seven and eight and nine healed to ten. In all, all made brand new, but one, just one, only one came to say thank you. Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, I am so glad that Jesus loves me, Jesus loves even me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, I am so glad that Jesus loves me, Jesus loves even me. I I am so glad that Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me, Jesus loves even me. My life is better, yes it is. I like it better when I'm with when you. I'm hey. Behold, I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice. And open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. My life is better, yes it is. I like it better when I'm with when you. I'm hey. Hello boys and girls, are you ready for story time? Good! Today's story is called The Lost Voice and it's about three brothers. Ten-year-old Juan, nine-year-old Louise, and seven-year-old Francisco. The boys moved in with their grandma because sadly their father died and their mother was in prison. Grandma Anna loved her grandsons, but she wasn't working and wasn't sure how she was going to take care of them. One day, Grandma Anna was out and she saw her former nurse, Marta, and her husband, Oh, Marta, I want to talk to you, Grandma said. Grandma was so happy to see her friend that she told her everything. She told Marta about her son-in-law, her daughter, and that her three grandsons were now living with her. She told Marta that they were sad and crying all the time, and she didn't know what to do. Well, Marta wasn't sure either, but she knew someone who might be able to help. Marta spoke to her pastor, and he told her to invite the boys to the special horse-themed children's week of prayer that would be starting in a couple weeks. Marta told Grandma Anna, and she told her grandsons. Well, Juan initially didn't want to go because he had never been inside a church before. Louise had not heard of God before, but he wanted to learn more, and little Francisco well, he fell asleep at first, but soon all three of the boys couldn't wait to go to the meetings each and every night. Oh, they wanted to learn more about Jesus, and soon they fell in love with Jesus. When week of prayer was ended, the brothers started attending church every Sabbath, and Marta began giving children's Bible study to the boys every Sabbath afternoon. Six months later, the pastor invited the boys to Adventurer Camp Out. Oh, I know some of you boys and girls have been and know what it's all about, right? 
Well, the three brothers loved the morning and evening worship. In fact, at one of these worship, a nine-year-old disabled boy gave his personal testimony and announced that he wanted to be baptized. Luis was so touched that he decided that he also wanted to give his heart to Jesus. When Luis told his brothers, they said they wanted to be baptized as well. Oh, what a special day that was. The church was full. Everyone wanted to see the three brothers get baptized. Well, a few years have passed, and now the boys are helping out in the AV department of their church. And Luis, well, he's preached several times and even wants to become a pastor. Amen. Boys and girls, you're not too young to give your heart to Christ. We have lots of examples in the Bible of boys and girls that were used by God. Remember King Josiah? He didn't want to follow his evil grandfather and father. Oh no, Josiah was a good king and brought his people back to worshiping Christ. So even though you're young, you can still do mighty things for God. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you for the boys and girls. I pray that you will be with them and as they learn more about you, that they will grow to love you more and more each day. Thank you for all that you have done for us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Bye, boys and girls. My life is better. Yes, it is. His heart was broken, mine was mended. He became sin, now I am clean. The cross he carried, bore my burden. The nails that held him set me his life for mine, His life for mine, how could it ever be that He would die, God's Son would die, to save suffering brought me healing. He spilled his blood to fill my soul. His crown of thorns made me royalty. His sorrow
The enduring testimony of the Apostle Paul is that God can change anyone. Once a fierce enemy of God, Jesus powerfully called him to repent and offered him forgiveness and a new life. Paul believed Jesus and eagerly obeyed. Now he wrote to countless readers, urging them to place their full confidence in Jesus for deliverance and to remind them that his eternal treasure is worth more than anything here on earth. Paul reminded them of the faith of Abraham and how he sought after the promises of God as the ultimate treasure because Abraham believed God. God promised that from Abraham he would create a great nation and that through his family the Messiah would come. Leave everything behind, God told him, and move toward a land I will show you. So Abraham left the only home he knew for a land he knew nothing about. Even with the challenges of famine, family conflict, and the possibility of vicious enemies, he remained faithful to God. Although he was an old man, Abraham set off on an amazing adventure in search of the greatest treasure. Nothing else mattered to him because he believed God. God promised Abraham that his descendants would be so many they could not be counted. God said to Abraham, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. Abraham knew he could trust God because when God makes a promise, he never breaks it. Abraham never gave up on the hopeful future that God promised. God was pleased with Abraham and not ashamed to be known far and wide as the God of Abraham. Not because Abraham was perfect, but because Abraham faithfully believed in the one who is perfect. It was not because of what Abraham did or did not do, but because he had faith in the one who declared him sinless in the sight of God. Although Abraham was very old and his wife Sarah was unable to bear children, Abraham believed when God said he would bear a son. He knew with full assurance that God would stand by his promise because he knew nothing was impossible with God. Abraham believed with his last breath that God would keep all of his promises. God promised to make out of him a great nation from descendants as numerous as the stars, and he did. God promised him an heir, and he gave him a son. God promised Abraham the land of Canaan, and years later God delivered the land to Israel. God promised that through his descendants the whole world would be blessed, and many years later God sent his son, Jesus, to be born in the very line of Abraham, to be the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Yes, the Messiah came according to the promises of God. He died and rose again victorious over sin and death. All those who declare Jesus as Lord and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead will be saved. Abraham caught a glimpse of God's plan and believed. Like Abraham, we can also put our trust in the promises of God and become part of God's family because of the cross and by faith. Today I have with me four individuals who have been working closely, closely studying the Bible. Uh, we have Sister Jackie, who has been studying the Bible with Justice, Jeremiah, and Hosiah. And I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our discussion this evening. I hope everybody's doing well. You can wave if you're doing well. Are you doing well? Good, good. Everybody's doing well. Awesome, awesome. So we just have a few questions we need to, to ask you to find out exactly what your walk is like so far as you go through the word of God with Sister Jackie. And the first question I would like to ask is, since you've been studying the Bible, and that's for all three of you, what have you learned so far? And Justice, I want to start with you. What have you learned so far as you study the Bible? I learned about creation and Daniel 
how Daniel put his trust in God and God helped him when he needed it most. Thank you. Good, good. Jeremiah, what about you? What I learned is that God created the earth when he just said, let there be light. There was light. And there only God can do all those things. And that's what I got in the Bible. Study. Okay. I'm sure you learn a lot more, but thank you for sharing that particular story. Je uh, Hosea, what about you? What have you learned so far? I learned that... Like Mo, I learned about Moses, that God, the Father, is the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one. And I just learned about David and all those other stuff. Good, good. So there's a lot of stuff that you learned. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay, so this next question is for Justice and Jeremiah. So you've been studying the Bible, and what changes have you seen so far in your life? How has the words of the Bible, the words of God, changed your life so far? Jeremiah, you want to go first? Yes, and how they changed me is that it's telling me things that what's right for me to do and things that are wrong for me to do. And it's just telling me what the good things to do and the bad things to do. Because if I know right from wrong, then I can't make the, a bad choice. And if I don't make a bad choice, um, that means um, I can do better and be closer to God. Amen. Amen. Justice, what about you? It has taught me to be kinder and has told me about the things that I didn't know before. Okay, that's awesome. So Jackie, I think you have questions for them as well. Why don't you go ahead? Yes, these amazing, wonderful children. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions for you. And my first question to Justice. Justice, some people say that the Bible is boring. Do you think that the Bible is boring? No. The Bible teaches us about how we were created and that God made us out of dirt and dust. And it, show, it tells us a lot of amazing things about God. The Bible can even change us. It's very exciting. Very good. Thank you, Justice. Awesome. Thank you. And Jeremiah, you think that the Bible is boring like some people do? No. no. It's actually very exciting. It's full of a lot of amazing stories. It shows how God is great and how good he is to us because it's telling us all about like how David killed Goliath, how he put all his trust in God to the point where he can kill a giant. And it doesn't matter about how big or small you are. It matters how much faith you have in God. Amen. 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 Wonderful answers. Great answers. So, Hosea, I have a question for you. What is your favorite text? John 1. My favorite text is John 1, verse 1. And what does that say? It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same in the beginning with God. Nothing was made that was made without him. And why is that your favorite? Because it tells me like in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So like that means like when he said let there be light, it just became light. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Amen. He was the creator. You are right. Justice, do you have a favorite text? I do. It's Psalms 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. It tells us and shows us that God is the shepherd and we are the sheep. He leads us through good and bad and he guides us through life. Mm, awesome. 
And you're, you must be a good sheep. <laughs> okay. I'll ask the same question to you, Jeremiah. What is your favorite text? My favorite text is Psalms 100. Mm. The reason why it's my favorite text is because it's telling me to serve the Lord with all my heart and he deserves all that praise because he's the one that created us. If it wasn't for him, we would be nothing. There's been nothing in this world. Awesome. You know, you three are really encouraging me. Thank you so much for your answers. Yes, indeed. Over to you, Sister Angela. Yes, indeed, indeed. I am so proud of this, these youngsters. Uh, I have one more question for you. Now, you've been studying. What do you expect to happen at the end of your studies? What, what would you like to see happen once you finish your studies? Uh, Jose, you want to tell me what uh, you plan on doing? Um, I would like preach more about God and like just teach so people could like read the Bible, praise him, sing songs about him and just praise him. Amen. You want them to praise God with you. Awesome job. Thank you very much. Thank you. What about you, Jeremiah? Well, what I would do after the Bible studies would be to just praise God and just tell other people about him and a lot of other things, like just tell them how God, how good God is that been for me and just encourage people to just praise the Lord and yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What about you, Justice? I would want to continue my studies and learn a lot more about God than I did during the time I was studying. Awesome. And hopefully one day uh, we all will get to heaven, but I'm sure you, as you get older with your parents uh, discussing it with you, you'd want to give your heart to Christ in baptism one of these days when you're a little older. Is that okay to say? Any one of you would like to get baptized a little later on? Give your heart to Christ? Yes? Okay. All right. All right. Good, good, good. So I thank you very much. You've been studying the Bible. You have your favorite text. You know what the Bible said because you've explained it to us that God is good. You want to tell others about God. It helps you make wise decisions. Uh, little Hosea loves the word, which is uh, the word of God, which is God himself. And one of these days, you want to give your heart to Christ so we can go home to live with him forever and ever. I thank you again very much. Continue to study. Continue to share the good news of salvation. And may God bless you and keep you. And Sister Jackie, thank you for taking the time of to study with these young ones. And may God continue to give you wisdom as you impart his truth to them. God bless you all. Thank you again and stay safe.
loves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. Hi boys and girls, happy Sabbath. We are so glad that we are together as we continue to worship Jesus as Lord and Savior and Master of our lives. And of course, we want to wrap things up as we continue to discuss um, matters concerning creation. And of course, the Bible is absolutely clear, boys and girls, that the creator of this world is actually Jesus. When you look in the book of Matthew, not Matthew, in the book of John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, and also verse 14, and also in the book of Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, it is clear that Jesus is the one who is creator. Jesus is the one who created the heaven and the earth. Jesus is the one who created you and me and every single boy and girl in this world. And of course, Jesus created us for the the single most important purpose and that is for us to have relationship with him in fact god wants every boy and every girl to have relationship with him because he's a god of relationship because his character is a character of love and as a loving creator he wants to share himself he wants to share his goodness with each and every one of us and guess what boys and girls based on the bible god knew you and he declared that he had what is called a purpose for your life there is a reason why god created you in fact the bible says in jeremiah chapter 1 verses verses verse 5 it says um, before you were born i knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb i ordained you so in other words god has a special plan for you and the most important part of that plan is for you to have relationship with Jesus is for you to fall in love with Jesus and the good news is that the Spirit of God is leading in your life because many of you as boys and girls are falling in love with Jesus because you are studying the Bible and you are knowing more about him and the more you know more about him it is it the more you are falling in love with Jesus. And of course, Jesus is calling you to surrender your life for you to, to also get baptized because it's important for you to get baptized in order for you to spend time with Jesus in heaven. This is what the Bible says, except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible actually says. And so baptism is absolutely important. And so a part of this relationship purpose, a part of this relationship experience with God is for children to get baptized. And I'm glad that you're falling in love with Jesus and you're making up your minds to get baptized so that you can have a closer relationship with the one who created you and has a plan to use use your life in a positive way in this world and this is the calling of God upon children right the Bible is absolutely clear in the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 14 the Bible says and suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of heaven so in other words god is saying allow children to come to him allow every single boy and girl to come to him in other words parents should not stop their children from surrendering their lives parents should not stop their children from you know making up their minds to follow jesus as long as every child understands jesus through bible studies and love jesus with their hearts they can follow jesus and they can surrender and they can go all the way with jesus because guess what the best children in this life are those who know Jesus. The best children in this life are those who follow Jesus. The best children in this life are those who apply the principles of Jesus in their lives. The best children in this life are those who their parents allow them to be 
nurtured in God, allow them to, to make up their minds and encourage them and support them along this way. And of course, these children, while they are not perfect, they tend to give less problem because they were allowed to grow in the Lord. And so parents and boys and girls, the Spirit of God is calling you. You are falling in love with Jesus and you wanted to, to make it in God's eternal kingdom to spend the ceaseless ages of eternity with Jesus Christ. Let children come and follow their creator and love him with all their hearts. Amen, boys and girls. God bless you and take care. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. My life is better, yes it is, I like it better, when I'm with when you, I'm hey. oh, oh. Hi again boys and girls. I had such an amazing time today at Children's Church, and I hope all of you did as well. So let's give a big round of applause to all of our participants today. You all did an amazing job. Thank you so much. And thank you again, boys and girls, for helping me figure out how much God loves us. He loves us so much. His love is everlasting, and it never runs out. And that is pretty amazing. And you know, boys and girls, not only does God love us so much, but he also calls us to love other people. So think of ways that you can show love to the people around you this week. Well, that's it for Children's Church. But remember, if you have any ideas about how we can make Children's Church even better, make sure that you have your parents email us at connecttochrist at gmail.com. All right, that's all. But before we go, let's say a word of prayer. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for another great day at Children's Church. And thank you for allowing us to learn more about your amazing love for us. And help us this week to show love to those around us. Thank you for everything, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, I'll see you next week at Children's Church. And don't forget to show love to those around you. Goodbye.